are you under there? What are you hiding? My son dreamt of a better world. That's why he saved me. You can go to any timeline, any universe. Why'd fight to save this one? What could be greater than a king? A hero. I just got goosebumps. <laughs> If we don't stand up, no one will. Come with us. It's a glorious world out there. Waiting for you. Are you in? Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my DC Movies Super Bowl trailer video. They released footage for all the upcoming movies that they're releasing this year. Black Adam, The Batman, The Flash Movie, Aquaman 2. So there's a bunch of new footage for everything. We'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing Super Bowl trailer videos for all the Marvel trailers tomorrow. There's a Lord of the Rings trailer coming too. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to watch those. It is going to be crazy this weekend in the best possible way. I'm sure there's also some cool football stuff that's going to be happening too. We secretly know why you're all really watching the Super Bowl, because of all the trailers. I'll start with the Black Adam trailer footage first, then I'll talk about the stuff from the other movies. But the Black Adam trailer gives us our first full look at the brand new DCEU Justice Society. In the movie in present day, after Black Adam is released from his magical prison where the wizard Shazam put him for 5,000 years, the Justice Society of the DCEU has been in shambles. There was one in the distant past of the DCEU, but I believe the idea is that some of the original roster of older superheroes died at some point and only Dr. Fate and Hawkman are left. And in the present, they're going to form a new Justice Society roster with Cyclone and Atom Smasher, who you see both in their plain clothes and also in their costumes. And even though Black Adam was featured heavily during the Justice Society comics and in the trailer, Dr. Fate is asking him, please join us in helping save the world. Black Adam isn't going to become a member of the DCEU Justice Society. He's not a team player. That's just not something he would do. In the movie, it's more of a temporary alliance, after which he would go back to Kondok to rule over it permanently, like he does in the comics. He spends the vast majority of his time in Kondok, actually being their main ruler actively on a daily basis. And obviously at the end of the movie, they'll set up Shazam versus Black Adam crossover in their next movies, like after Shazam 2, more like Shazam Lee versus Black Adam. That big crossover won't actually be happening till like Shazam 3 or Black Adam 2, not till after both of their next movies, however they want to handle that, like what they'll actually call it. Black Adam 2 might actually wind up being Black Adam versus Henry Cavill Superman if The Rock has his way. We'll see about that. The brand new footage starts with Black Adam in his full cape from the comics like his cloak is on, getting ready to wreck some military helicopters in conduct. All the scenes in the trailer here where he's wearing his full cloak seem like they're right after he comes out of that magical prison as he's learning what's happened to the world of the past 5,000 years. Like learning about all this modern technology, weaponry, and then destroying them like they're bugs. Like, oh, you have all these guns and missiles and bombs and they don't even leave a scratch on him. Imagine him soaking all this damage like Superman. Like he's so OP, missiles would just tickle him a little bit. And they'll just use scenes like this early on to show you how powerful he is. And how he has no problem killing people. He's way more powerful than Shazam, mostly because of the way Shazam shares his power with the Shazamly. Black Adam does not share his power with anyone, so he's operating at 100% of his potential all the time. Whereas Shazam is only ever at a fractional amount of his potential. The only reason why the Shazamly ever has a chance against Black Adam is when they all coordinate their attacks together, but usually they're not all together all fighting him at the same time. When he's inside these ruins here talking to Hawkman, this is inside the ruins where they found him. You notice Hawkman is in his full comic book armor. There's a couple scenes with him where he unfurls his wings, you see his spaceship. Black Adam says his son dreamt of a better world and that's why he saved him. You see a flashback scene of him right before he became Black Adam when he was still a slave and it seems like they're beating him or they're getting ready to kill him. And I believe what he means when he says his son saved him is that his son sacrificed his life to save him from these slave masters in ancient Kondok and Black Adam was forced to watch them kill his son. His wife died too so something similar may have happened to his wife. And that's why he's so hardcore, why he swears revenge and uses the power of Shazam when he got it. Although in the backstory that we got in the first Shazam movie about what happened in ancient Kondok, what happened to the original group of wizards in the Rock of Eternity, 
is actually the seven deadly sins that tricked Black Adam into releasing them as a way to get revenge for the death of his son and wife. And then the seven deadly sins are the ones that kill everyone in conduct and the other wizards in the Rock of Eternity, all except for the wizard Shazam. That's how they're making Black Adam more sympathetic as an anti-hero by saying he was manipulated by the seven deadly sins. So all these deaths aren't totally his fault and the people that he did kill because he did kill a lot of people were really, really bad people. Like I said, the spaceship here you see flying through the Arctic or somewhere near Kondok in these mountains in this part of the world is Hawkman's ship. There are Thanagarian symbols all over it, so maybe we'll get some flashbacks to Thanagar when they're doing Hawkman's origin story in the movie. I don't know how much of that we're going to get in this first movie. The Hawkman continuity in the comics is a little bit confusing, so we'll see which version of Hawkman's origin story they're going with in the DCEU. And The Rock did say that at one point they were going to have Hawkgirl in the movie, but he implied they had to cut her out because some other upcoming DC movie is going to be using her. They didn't say which one, but we'll see a version of Hawkgirl at some point. The Thanagarians are powerful aliens that wield Nth Metal, which is sort of like the DCEU version of Vibranium, an ultra-rare, ultra-powerful ore that very few people outside of the Thanagarians have access to. All of his armor, his ship, his technology is based on Nth Metal. In the trailer footage, they show you Black Adam using his magical lightning to destroy a bunch of stuff. For example, Hawkman's armor could soak some of that magical lightning. This is Cyclone on their ship in her costume. We don't see her using her powers in the trailer, but they are exactly what you think they are. She creates Cyclones. Pretty simple. There is footage of her in Adam Smasher in what looks like the JSA mansion where Dr. Fate probably lives. This chair seems like Nth Metal, and you can see some precious artifacts behind him here. If you've ever watched any Young Justice episodes, Dr. Fate is also the keeper of the Tower of Fate, which is like his secret magical lair where he lives and keeps all his most dangerous magical artifacts. It's a little bit like the Rock of Eternity, and because they already have the Rock of Eternity in the Shazam Black Adam canon, I don't know if they're going to actually do the House of Fate, so I think this is just meant to be the JSA Mansion. Everyone's costumes look pretty solid, Dr. Fate, Hawkman, Adam Smasher, Cyclone, Black Adam. In fact, they just upgraded all the shazam -ly costumes for Shazam 2 to make them more hardcore and look similar to the Black Adam costume. The only difference in The Rock's Black Adam costume is that he does not wear padding underneath his costume. 100% original there. Because Adam Smasher is so young, I'm also wondering if he's going to wind up being the son of the previous Adam Smasher. His abilities look like they're powered by his belt here. His costume looks kind of old-timey, like it was designed by the original Adam Smasher on the original version of the JSA at some point in the DCEU history. They did do a version of Adam Smasher in The Flash Season 2 that you may remember. He was a little bit different. He was played by Edge from WWE, but it was actually pretty solid at the time. There are a couple other scenes of Black Adam busting out of his tomb here with all these carvings of people around him. But because the movie's coming out this summer, we'll probably get a bigger trailer when they release the Batman movie in March. And speaking of which, next up, there isn't a ton of brand new Batman footage in this, so I'm just going to skip over that. There was a separate Batman Super Bowl trailer that they released, so I will do a video for that in the next couple of days as I get through all the different Super Bowl trailers that are coming this weekend. The new Flash movie trailer is pretty brief. It's mostly just hyping up some of the new aspects of the upgraded Flash suit. Notice that it's got retractable visors in his eyepieces, like he lowers them when he runs. The voiceover for Michael Keaton's Batman is also the same one from the last trailer, so not a ton of brand new footage here. The new Aquaman 2 Lost Kingdom footage is of him in that new stealth suit. That's why it looks so dark. It's just a stealth suit. There's also a new scene of him in the old suit sitting on the throne of Atlantis. Not a ton of brand new footage. I've already done a full breakdown video of the bigger Aquaman 2 trailer they released last year, so I'll add a link for that in the description below. The Lost Kingdom that they reference in the title of the movie is the Lost Seventh Kingdom of Atlantis. Originally, Atlantis was a nation made up of seven different kingdoms that broke apart when it sank. Based on the other trailer footage, the Lost Kingdom seems like it's either underneath the Arctic in the north or underneath Antarctica in the south. The movie's going to be a big Aquaman or team-up movie. Black Manta will be one of the main villains. Maybe not the actual main villain, but definitely one of the main villains. But now they're playing Ocean Master as more of an anti-hero. If you spotted any other big Easter eggs in the trailer footage for all the different movies that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. My Marvel Super Bowl trailer videos will start posting tomorrow. My Lord of the Rings trailer will probably post on Monday. I will put links for all those videos in the description as I start posting them too. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel to be the first to watch those. Everyone click here for my new Mandalorian Season 3 video and click here for my Marvel Moon Knight trailer video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.